Hi everyone, I'm John from Radford Mathematics, and in this video on circle theorems, we're going to be learning about what I'll call the angle at the center rule. On the page here, you can see that I've already set up three circles, which are three examples, that we're going to be working through in just a few minutes. And to do that properly, the first thing we need to spend a minute on is the angle at the center of a circle and recognizing which arc on the circle is subtending it. In other words, which arc it's formed by. So let me start with that. Let's say I have a circle, something looking like this, and I'll go ahead and say that its center is right here. And now by placing two points on the circumference of this circle, for instance, here and here, it creates two distinct arcs. In other words, two parts along the circumference of the circle. So one of the arcs would be this part of the circumference, and the other arc would be this part of the circumference. Now, if I join each of these two points to the center of the circle, so something like this and like that, then this creates two angles at the center of the circle, one of which is right here, and the other is this larger reflex angle right here. And for the theorem or rule that we work with in this video, it's very important to be able to recognize or see which arc forms each of these two angles. And here's the idea. This angle at the center is subtended by this arc along the circle. And in fact, I'll highlight that in red. This angle at the center is subtended by this arc right here. On the other hand, this angle at the center is subtended by the longer arc we have right here. And I'll tell you what, I'll draw around that arc as well. There we go. And as simple as that may seem, recognizing the arc that is forming the angle at the center we're dealing with is really important. But now that that's said, let me show you three setups or three configurations that you want to make sure you recognize in order to use the theorem that I'm about to state. So for the first setup, I'll start by drawing a circle. There we go. And I'll say that its center is right here. And I'll now add two points at the circumference of this circle, so here and here which I then join to the center of the circle. There we go. And so just as we did right here, we can see that we now have two angles at the center of the circle. But now I'm going to add a third point at the circumference of this circle. And for this first setup or first configuration, I'll add that third point right here. And by joining this third point to the end points of this arc, in other words, by joining these two points and these two points, it creates what we call an angle at the circumference. That's this angle right here. And this angle is subtended or formed by this arc right here. And in fact, I'll draw underneath that arc, it's this arc right here. Okay, now that we have our angle at the circumference and we know which arc is subtending it, we need to ask ourselves which angle at the center is being formed by the same arc. Well, following what I said a minute ago, we can tell right away that the angle at the center that's being formed by this arc is this one right here. And so what this circle theorem tells us is if an angle at the circumference and an angle at the center are formed or subtended by the same arc, then the angle at the center is two times bigger than the angle at the circumference. Or I could say the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. In other words, if the angle at the circumference is a degrees, then the angle at the center here will be 2 times a, or 2a. And that's the angle at the center theorem. And provided the setup looks the way it does here, it's quite easy to recognize. Indeed, the three points on the circumference along with the center of the circle form this quadrilateral which looks a bit like an arrowhead. And for some reason I find that quite easy to remember. But let me show you two other configurations for this same theorem, which look a little bit different, and so they're definitely worth seeing before I work through the examples. The second configuration looks something like this. So again, I start by drawing the circle. I add the center here, and I'll place two points at the circumference, so one there and one there, and I create my two angles at the center by joining the points at the circumference to the center. There we go. And so I've split the circumference of the circle into two arcs, one down here, and one up here, and of course we have two angles at the center, we have this one here, and this one here. Now, just as I did here, I'm going to add a third point to the circumference of the circle, but this time I'll add it down here. 
I now join this third point to the other two points at the circumference, which makes it all look something like this. Okay, now although this may look quite different to what I drew here, the fact is we are still dealing with the same scenario. And that is, we have an angle at the circumference, which in this case would be right here, and we have an angle at the center. But which of the two angles at the center should we be considering in this case? Well, to answer that important question, you need to ask yourself, which arc is forming or which arc is subtending the angle at the circumference? And the arc which is forming this angle is this longer arc I'm hovering over right now. And in fact, I'll draw around it in blue to make things clear. There we go. That's the arc that's subtending the angle at the circumference. And now that we know which arc we're dealing with, we can tell which angle at the center we have to work with. And that is whichever angle at the center is being formed by the same arc. And of course, that's this angle right here. And so this angle at the circumference and this arc at the center are both being subtended or formed by the same arc. Consequently, we can use the theorem we just learnt to state that if the angle at the circumference is A, then the angle at the center must be 2A. And there we go. That's the second setup. Okay, one more setup or configuration to show you before we work through the examples. And here it is. Again, I'll start by drawing a circle. There we go. And I'll say that its center is right here. I now split the circumference into two arcs by adding two points at the circumference of the circle. So I have an arc here and another arc around here. And I join those two points to the center of the circle, like so. We now have two angles at the center of the circle. And so I now create an angle at the circumference. And for that, I place a third point at the circumference. And this time I'll place it right here. I now join this third point to the other two points at the circumference, which makes it all look like this. Okay, now this third configuration looks quite different to the previous two we've just seen. But in fact, we're still dealing with the same setup. And that is, we have an angle at the circumference, that's this angle right here, and we have an angle at the center. But now the question, which angle at the center do we need to be working with here? And to answer that, we need to ask ourselves which arc is subtending this angle at the circumference. And looking at this angle at the circumference, we can see that the arc that's subtending it is this one right here. And to make that clear, I'll draw around it in red right here. That's the arc. And now that we know the arc that's forming the angle at the circumference, we choose the angle at the center which is being formed by the same arc. So that would be this angle at the center right here. And so now we can see that what we're dealing with here is an angle at the circumference as well as an angle at the center, which are being subtended by the same arc. Consequently, we can use the theorem and state that if the angle at the circumference is A, then the angle at the center must be 2 times A. And there we go. Provided you're comfortable in recognizing those three setups, I want to say you're good to go. So I would recommend spending a bit of time make sure you're comfortable in recognizing each of these three scenarios. In fact, I'd even suggest making sure you're able to sketch each of these three setups without looking at your notes. That being said, let's go ahead and work through these three examples. The first example is the one we have down here. And in fact, I'll label it, I'll say example one on the side here. There we go. Now, looking at this, we can see that we're given a circle and we need to find this angle A at its circumference. And for that, we're given an angle at the center of the circle, which is 150 degrees. In other words, this scenario is angle at the circumference and angle at the center which suggests we should be using the theorem we just learnt about. And to do that properly, the first thing you should always ask yourself is which arc is subtending or forming the angle at the circumference. And looking at this angle at the circumference, we can tell that the arc that's forming it is this arc at the bottom here. And in fact, I'll even highlight it. It's this arc right here. Consequently, we need to take the angle at the center that's being formed by the same arc which is this 150 degree angle right here. 
And so the angle A at the circumference and the 150 degree angle at the center are both formed by this same arc, and we can therefore state that the angle at the center, this 150 degrees, equals to 2 times our angle at the circumference. In other words, we can go ahead and write that 150, that's 150 degrees, is equal to 2 times A. Now to find A, all we have to do is get rid of this 2 that's multiplying it, and we do so by dividing both sides by 2, which leads us to 150 divided by 2 on the left-hand side, so that's 75, and that's 75 degrees, and that's equal to 2A divided by 2 on the right-hand side, which of course is just A. In other words, A is equal to 75 degrees. And that's the answer. Okay, let's look at the second example, example 2. Once more we're given a circle and we need to find this unknown angle A. And this time the unknown angle that we're trying to find is at the center of the circle. And we're given an angle at the circumference which is right here and it's 130 degrees. So again our setup or scenario is angle at the circumference and angle at the center. So let's try and use our theorem. Well, just as before, and as will always be the case, we need to ask ourselves which arc is forming the angle at the circumference. In other words, which arc is forming this 130 degree angle here. And looking at this angle here, we quickly realize that the arc that's forming it, or the arc that's subtending it, is the long arc I'm hovering over right now. And in fact, I'll highlight that long arc like so. Okay, now that we know which arc is subtending the angle at the circumference, we need to choose the angle at the center, which is being subtended by that same arc. And so the angle at the center, which is being formed by this blue arc, is this angle right here, which I'll go ahead and call angle B. Okay, now although this doesn't allow us to find this angle A right away, provided we find this angle B, we'll be able to figure out what angle A is, by using the fact that they have to add up to 360. Remember, angles around a point must always add up to 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and find this angle B. We'll then quickly be able to find what the angle A we're after is. Okay, well using the angle at the center theorem, since this 130 degree angle at the circumference and this angle B at the center are subtended by the same arc, we can state that angle B must be equal to 2 times this angle at the circumference. In other words, we can go ahead and write B is equal to 2 times 130, and that's 130 degrees. And 2 times 130 is 260, so B is equal to 260 degrees. Finally, since A plus B must equal to 360, which are right here, we must have A plus B, which equals to 360. And since B is equal to 260, this becomes A plus 260 equals to 360. Finally, to find the angle A we're after, we subtract 260 from both sides of this equation, which leads us to the answer A equals to 100 degrees. And we're done. Okay, I move on to the third and final example, and I'll label it example three. Once again, we're given a circle, and we need to find this unknown angle, A. And looking at the information here, A is an angle at the circumference of this circle, and we're given one of the two angles at the center. So, angle at the circumference, angle at the center, suggesting we still use the same theorem. The angle A we need to find is at the circumference. And as always, the thing to ask ourselves is which arc is subtending the angle at the circumference. And looking at this, we quickly see that the arc that's forming this angle at the circumference is the one I'm hovering over right now, which I'll highlight here in red, like so. That's the arc. Okay, now that we know which arc is subtending the angle at the circumference, we need to focus on the angle at the center, which is formed by the same arc. And in this case, that's the angle we're given. That's this 138 degree angle right here. And now since this angle A at the circumference and this angle of 138 degrees at the center are subtended by the same arc, we can use our theorem to state 
that the angle at the center, this 138 degree angle, must be equal to 2 times the angle at the circumference. In other words, we can go ahead and write that the angle at the center, this 138 degrees, must equal to 2 times the angle A at the circumference, so that's 2A. And now to find A, all we have to do is divide both sides of this equation by 2. So I'll divide 138 by 2, and I'll divide 2A by 2 as well. And so on the left-hand side, 138 divided by 2 is 69, so that's 69 degrees, and that's equal to 2A divided by 2, which is just A. So I'll write that here. There we go. And in fact, I'll write it here. A must therefore be equal to 69 degrees. And that's the answer. And there we go. That's it for this circle theorem. Remember, if an angle at the circumference and an angle at the center are subtended by the same arc, then the angle at the center will be two times bigger than the angle at the circumference. And that's it for this tutorial.